Okay. Okay. Rolling? Rolling. Okay. Hi, Jane Fennelman here, and yes, they're real. <laughs> okay? I thought to talk to you about a super serious subject today, death and dying, that I would start out with my chest. So some of you who know me know that I had breast cancer and I know that when people find this out and, and my breast cancer was 12 years ago, by the way, I was 45. I know that when people find this out, their very next thought, well, when I say I had cancer, they say what kind and when I say breast cancer, I know their next thought is, wow, I wonder if those are real. So I'm here to tell you, thanks to my grandma, whose rack I got, yes, they're real. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, long, long, long time ago, a girlfriend of mine got me this shirt. I did not buy myself this shirt. And I've actually never worn this shirt out in public. So this is my first time outing myself with this shirt. It says, yes, in bright pink, yes, dot, 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 they're real. So, um, it's great. <laughs> I got away with lumpectomies and chemo and radiation. And it was just really hardcore. Like the chemo, the radiation, all that stuff really nearly killed me. Chemo's really bad for you, turns out. So I want to talk to you today about death and dying and how you can actually use cancer as a spiritual journey, cancer as a spiritual path. So what you're really going to want to do is this. When you hear about the big C, you have the big C or somebody you love, they call it the big C because they're actually afraid to say the word cancer. People are afraid to say that word. Cancer, 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 cancer. So we have to really demystify cancer. It's a good spot. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Jessica. So the first thing that happens when people hear that they or someone they love has a life-threatening illness is usually they get scared so, it didn't happen that way for me. Um, number one, it was a sad time in my life. I just had a miscarriage and a divorce. So I was really ready to go. So I was actually relieved. And um, there's a video. I, no one would let me talk about death and dying. So I started keeping a video diary. And it ended up being made, I made it into this big, beautiful documentary that ended up in a huge film festival in Hollywood and um, as one of 10 films chosen from the world, world of women filmmakers. So I was very honored in Jane Doe, it's called Jane Doe, An Intimate Journey with a Powerful Teacher, Cancer. And it was just tremendous, it was tremendous. Jane Doe, and you can see clips of it, look in my videos, you can look in my videos and search Jane Doe, and you'll see, maybe we'll put one of the clips below in the comment section of this video. Jane Doe, there's clips. Um, yes, we have permission to use the music that we used in the video, in the um, documentary. We have permission. And just beautiful. It's beautiful music and really poignant moments. And you'll see what happened in me. Um, you'll see how cancer ended up being a spiritual journey for me, a journey toward enlightenment. And there's even a part in the documentary where I say, just a flood, a flood of love came into my life. Cancer was a huge blessing. So, what if instead of freaking out and running around when we get diagnosed, it's like I, I had a really beautiful, amazing Native American gentleman tell me one time, years and years ago, I was in Oracle, Arizona at a place called Oracle Ranch, I think it was, and um, I've been in Arizona for 35 years and had never seen a scorpion. 
and that morning I woke up and went into the bathroom to brush my teeth and there on the wall next to the mirror was a scorpion. It was a big one, which are not dangerous. Um, the little ones that you can't see. I don't want to scare you. I don't want to get you scared about scorpions now. But um, so later that afternoon I was sitting on the porch talking to this gentleman, such a lovely man, and uh, telling him I saw my first scorpion and he said, you know, white people are really funny. Funny. Very funny. When they get stung by a scorpion, they go running around, running around, running, running, running. I've been stung by a scorpion! Ah! They're running and uh, trying to fix it. And I said, really? What do the Native American people do? And he said, we sit down and get quiet and see what spirit brings to tell us to learn from that experience. And so I think because I had that beautiful wisdom imparted to me by that glorious man and because of one of my other greatest teachers in my life, George Adair, who's the founder of Omega Vector, who used to say to me, when I met George when I was 30, 31, and he was like 55, he used to talk about death a lot. Like he talked about death every time I saw him. And I loved that man. He was like a father to me. And he really raised me. He raised me, George Adair. And I remember pretty early on saying, George, please stop talking about dying. And he said two things to me. He said, oh, Jane, please don't do that to me. And I said, do what? And he said, when someone you love, who loves you, tells you they don't want you to die, it makes dying agony. Makes it agonizing, hard to leave. He said, don't do that to me. And then the other thing he said to me was, the Tibetan Book of the Dead says to think or talk about death every day, so when it comes a knocking at your door, it's like greeting an old friend. And I learned all these rich ideas, deep, deep wisdom from these wise people in my life, so that when my father died, really suddenly, he was super healthy, and he all of a sudden died of a, of a massive um, aneurysm, a stroke. And uh, he was in a coma for a few days, and then he expired. And, uh, well, we had to let him go. We had to make the decision to unplug and let him go. And it was a big moment. And I remember I heard something, and it was easier for me because of uh, the wisdoms that I'd been giving, given these pearls of wisdom. But also, there was a spiritual teacher who was there in St. Louis, a friend of my brother's, who said two things that I want you to remember about death and dying. Aside from learn from the journey, learn from the journey of any hard experience, please. Learn, 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 learn. If you have a learning mindset, it will make any hard experience easier. And I hope you're laughing through this whole video because of my girls and my funny shirt because I really want to bring levity to this heavy, heavy topic that scares us so badly because we don't know what's on the other side. So what this spiritual teacher said in St. Louis, okay. Good. what this spiritual teacher said in St. Louis at my father's, um, you know, it was like a reception. I don't know if that's what it's called, a reception. <laughs> it's not like a wedding reception. It was a funeral reception. And the, the guy said two things, this spiritual teacher, a friend of my brother's. My brother Jimmy. He said, life is like a narrow bridge and we go from one womb over this narrow bridge into this other womb, the earth. And this narrow bridge, we can slip off it at any moment. We can. Can't we? We can die at any moment. We don't know. 
So that means live life now, fully. The other thing he said is my favorite thing, and I've shared this um, because I have a minister's license and I, do, I have spoke, spoken at funerals uh, periodically over the years. He said, I don't know what death, death is, but maybe it's like this. Imagine if you were a twin in your mother's womb and you were in there for nine months and that was your whole world for nine months. It's actually nine and a half, but they don't tell you that. <laughs> Why would we be pregnant? How long? Dang, thanks for telling me. Um, but for nine and a half months, you're in there with your brother. And then imagine if your mom goes into labor and there's contractions happening and it's scary and you don't know what's happening. And you might think, oh my gosh, this is so painful and hard and scary. I don't know what's happening. And then imagine if your brother was born first. If he was being born first, if you could think such thoughts, you might think, my brother, he's dying. He's being swallowed by a great hole. And then, pop, he's gone. And you're back there in the womb all by yourself. You haven't been born yet. And if you could think such thoughts, you might think, my brother, he's dead and gone. Because you don't know, this is your whole world. This has been your whole world for almost 10 months. And so the spiritual man said, maybe that's what death is. When someone dies, we don't know where they went. We think they're dead and gone. Because there's no way we could imagine this entire other universe out here. We can't conceive of that. So, if you get diagnosed with cancer, watch this video. Remember how funny it is. Me and my grandma's rack. And I want you to savor every experience, every step of every experience so that you can gain spiritual enlightenment, wisdom, truth from it so you can grow and wizen, wisen up your soul. Every hard experience, it polishes our soul. So, I love you. I promise you'll get through it. Do not hesitate to contact me. And you can comment here on this video or you can go straight over to my Facebook page, Jane Fendelman, MC. And let me know what you're going through. Let me know how you feel. Or private message me for some individual support. Because I'm here for you. And I love you. And you'll get to meet all this in person. <laughs> okay. Happy Big C to you. Remember, it's a journey, it's only life, and I promise you, no matter what hard thing you're going through, it won't last. <laughs>